Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and in this video episode, I'm going to talk about how to teach art at home. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. All right, number one is to create a creative environment. And it doesn't mean that you have to go and set up an entire art studio, make it look super Instagram cute or anything. Um, you don't even have to have a permanent art space. We're just trying to add a few details that make it a creative environment. So what I like to do is no matter where you are creating, whether it's your kitchen table, your kitchen countertop, or even the kitchen floor, we're just going to change a few details, subtle details to make it a more creative environment. This includes maybe putting on some vibe music, whether it's like tropical rainforest sounds or cafe jazz playlist, or maybe a mindful Zen playlist or spa music, whatever it is, put on some creative vibe music, just some background music, right? Cause we're going to change the atmosphere to make it feel like it is art time. So then the next thing you can do is also change the lighting, right? Maybe you want to put on some lamps instead or whatever it is, put on some fun lighting. You can put out a couple of snacks or have a nice tea, whatever you would like to do. Um, that will change the mood and make it encouraging and be like, all right, it is a special art time. Let's do this together, right? We're gonna have that quality vibes together, quality uh, family time. Um, next is that we're going to allow for process over product. That means that we're going to value our child's process, their creative process and exploration over the end result. So sometimes, or a lot of the times, we're looking at their end work and it's our wants for their art and our likes or dislikes of their art over what they're feeling, right? We're like, okay, wow, that's just a bunch of scribbles or, oh my gosh, you need to color the sky blue and the mountains need to be, the grass needs to be colored green perfectly. Like who said the sky has to be blue? When I'm looking, I'm looking out my window right now and it's actually pretty gray. The sky isn't always blue. And sometimes there's a sunset, so it's pink and purple and orange and that is sky color. So no, there, it does not have to be blue and the grass doesn't have to be green. Sometimes in the summer, my grass looks pretty yellow and that's unfortunate, but it's true. So it does not have to be, it could be purple. It doesn't matter. It's whatever the artist wants and we have to value their process and exploration over the product because now we're stamping out their creativity. When we do that, when we say it has, when it's our wants for their work, when it's our desires, when it's our likes, when it's our dislikes affecting their work and we're like, no, the product has to be perfect or whatever it is. Now we're just killing their creativity. We're sticking them in the box that none of us want to be in. Shove in this box of, oh, conforming to whatever standards of life, killing creativity. And we wonder like, why do kids stop why do kids stop making art and drawing? I wonder why they stopped drawing after a certain age. Well, the creativity has been kind of killed. So if we want to like value that and allow that to blossom and grow. We're going to value their process and encourage them to explore over what it might end up looking like at the end. So at pre K K level, that might just look like playing with the mediums. We're not expecting them to make anything at the end. We're just seeing like what letting them have different things and exploring different processes like playing with some tempera paint or hand painting or doing some fingerprint or stamping with paint um, and then see cutting up elements and adding it on top and seeing what happens and letting it look however they would like it to look. And then maybe as they get a little older, we're like, okay, today we're going to draw bees with a whole bee theme. We're going to watch a bee documentary. We're going to go outside with our magnifying glasses. We're going to look at bees. We're going to read bee books and then we're going to draw or make some art of bees. And even though it's structured and directed, we're going to let them make bees the way they want to make bees. You can be like, okay, let's try making bees with oil pastels and then paint watercolor paints on top for some resist painting effects. That's cool. But you're going to let them explore that. And it's going to be however they want to explore bees versus how you want to explore bees. And then you want, I know you want it to be sometimes nice and tidy and cute. And if they wanted to do it, the, however they want to do it, that is totally fine. We're going to value their process and we're going to love it and celebrate being like, wow, that's amazing. Over being like, can we just like tie it up or draw in the lines? Maybe let's put a nice little felt line 
uh, outline first and color the inside with pencil crayon or colored pencil. So we're going to avoid that and allow process to bloom. I know it's tricky, right? And you might disagree with me. However, um, there's time and place, right? In the early ages, we want them to value, we want to value process over product to kind of allow for that cognitive development, for them to understand mediums and materials their own way. And quite frankly, when you go and you look at artists' work in real life, they're exploring their own process over the product sometimes, right? They want to have it look a certain way, but sometimes it's not always about that. It's about exploring the, their own human condition, their own emotions, what's going on inside, their feelings. It's, an, it's a reflection of their own intent and human condition, not everybody else's intent and human condition. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is a reflection of the societal human condition, but sometimes it's an internal thing. And if your child's expressing that internal thing and somebody just goes and crushes that, imagine how that feels. For instance, when I make my own art, it feels like a piece of me that I'm putting out into the world. And if somebody crushes it, it feels like they're crushing my soul flavor, whatever you want to call it. And it feels like, I, it feels like a dagger towards me, like I'm, I'm taking personal. So that's, and then I have to be like, no, Kathleen, we need to remove that. That's part of rejection in life. And we got to be resilient, blah, 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 blah. And that's why art critiques are there to help you get better. And I have to talk myself out of it. <laughs> but that's what it feels like. So imagine, and I, but I'm an adult and I can, I can differentiate that. But imagine what it feels like for a child. And that's my point. Number three, over that rant. Um, number three is to do lots of prompts with play-based experimentation and learning. So for instance, you can do some drawing prompts. Um, and you can give, you know, find a bunch of different drawing prompts. You can make some and pull them out of a jar, for instance, and then let them do play-based exploration of what, how to respond to that prompt, right? So you can give it more, again, more direct give a prompt, but they're, they're going to make it however they want to respond to it, right? They're going to make whatever they want to make from their imagination, but it's going to give them an idea, a little bit of structure, not just creative freedom where they're like blank page analysis paralysis. A little bit of structure, but it's still wide open enough that they have can explore it themselves, right? And do it through play based. Like just let them pick their own mediums and materials, whatever's in your art bin. That can be what they explore with, right? Um, or you can also do my favorite is to do like adjective and noun. So I have to get a pack of popsicle sticks. One half of it I write adjectives, the other half I draw, I write nouns, I put them into different jars, pull out. An adjective, it says creepy. Pull out a noun, it says cats. Okay, so we're gonna draw a creepy cat. Or you can pull out the same noun, right? But maybe it's time it's a sparkly cat. Or maybe it's gonna be a slimy carrot. Um, and that is so fun, because right, when I picture, when I say that, it's going to create images in your mind automatically. It's so simple, but automatically you're thinking about what that looks like. And that's gonna spark some ideas to help them create art at home. All right, number four is to get books to spark learning. So you can go to your local library, the bookstore, or look online for some different art books to inspire learning. So whether they're books about art and about creativity, like Peter Reynolds, uh, The Dot, or Ish, or um, Sky Color, those are beautiful books. Um, or perhaps um, you get books about artists and art history at a kid-friendly level, or you get books about how to make art and how to draw for kids. Those are great places to start to kind of um, help them learn some skills and learn about art. All of that is about the creative process or encouraging them. Like with Ish is a great way, to, a great book for encouraging, or The Dot is a great way to encourage art process. Uh, when you read it, you're like, oh my gosh, I can relate. It's not just a dot. It's not a, just a, a polar bear in a winter storm. It's a, you know, it's a great, the teacher's encouraging that person to explore theirs. And that one little dot, start, you know, begins as like a little confidence builder. And then it, the person keeps exploring and exploring and it keeps growing and getting builder. And that's the whole process of play-based experimentation and learning. They just grow naturally through it. Um, so you could do some, get some books. Now, if you're looking for our recommendations of books to explore, I do have a recommendation list of books in the description of this video of some books to check out. Um, and that could be a good place to start for getting ideas of what books to maybe even look at at the library or the bookstore or online. Just note that they are Amazon affiliate links. So if you do um, make a purchase with that link, by clicking that link, I may get a commission from it. 
All right, number five is to explore themes together or create art around just your child's interests. So you can explore themes like frogs and maybe you want to watch your frog documentaries or go find a local pond that has frogs. You can be frog hunting. Um, maybe you want to look at books about frogs and some nonfiction books about frogs. Maybe you want to read some stories about frogs um, or some fiction books about frogs. And then you're going to make art or draw some frogs. And that's a great way to do a theme-based exploration to give them ideas and preload them with information about their topic and practice doing research before we make art. Or you can um, do art around their, your child's interest. You'd be like brainstorming things they like and they're interested in right now. And then you could do like, say they're in, interested in uh, Harry Potter, for instance. This is so probably not true anymore um, because that was more true to me when I was a kid. <laughs> But maybe they're interested in Harry Potter and you do a whole Harry Potter little themed thing. We do some, make some butter beer or um, have some Harry Potter themed snacks. And then there's like keys that are with feathers on them. They're floating from your ceiling. I don't know. Putting on some candles and it's like a Harry Potter vibe. And you're going to make some Harry Potter art. And it's a whole little cute little thing. And how fun would that be? You don't have to go spend a bunch of money on it. Just use things around your house. Turn it into something and... Boom, good enough, right? Just a couple of little accents here and there. Using what you already have is what I like to do. Maybe you already have a Halloween costume hiding in a bin that has a witch hat or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> make it make it up. That's what I did do as a teacher, right? So uh, I think that's the best thing. <laughs> you can make it out of paper. Most things can be made out of paper. Like I printed off, I did a Harry Potter theme in my class one time. Years and years and years and years ago. And I cut out pictures of keys I printed off off of the uh, computer. I just printed onto yellow paper and I just like hot glued some white feathers on them and then I hung them from the ceiling and now I have full of those keys <laughs> from the, from the, um, not from the chamber secrets, from the, the philosopher's stone where he's going through those like challenges to get to, anyways, it doesn't matter. Moving on. All right, number six. <laughs> Anyways, is to take some art lessons. You can find some art lessons at local art studios um, and see there's kids art studios and kids art classes available, or maybe community centers offer them, or you can even take art lessons online because that is a thing nowadays. And if you're looking for some online art lessons, I do offer the Artastic Kids Online Streaming Art Lesson Membership, where you can, uh, for one, one, just one membership will be good for your entire household. It does not mean that you're enrolling each person like you would with traditional classes and you're paying 100 bucks here, 100 bucks there. However many kids you have, probably not 100 bucks, probably more than that. <laughs> but anyways, um, and then you only get six classes or whatever it is. Um, this is unlimited access for however long you retain, you choose to retain your membership and it, you get access to hundreds of art lessons and then I add five new art lessons every single month to the membership because I know that kids get bored They're like okay well what's next I, I don't like it here what's next it's, I want something new right so to allow for that I add five new art lessons every single month so you get access to five new art lessons added every month and all the previously added art lessons oh yes I mean it's forever growing and as well because it's online you can watch as many as you want you can watch one do one art lesson a month or you can choose to do a hundred it doesn't matter it's all for the same price and then you can access it anytime anywhere from any device so it can work with your very busy schedule because I know how hard it is to you know, you're working with your different schedules at home, um, in your job, um, you're working with your after school programs, you're driving everywhere, taking them to these, all these crazy things, and that eats up so much time, and sometimes it's just nice to be at home, and this gives you quality time together, instead of letting them go, and you're off by, you're by yourself, they're off on their own, now you have quality time, and you can make art together, and that's what I think is special, is if you do it with them, and create together, I think that would be so nice. Um, so that would be good. Um, you can check that out and if you would like to look into our cast of kids and take a look at the art lessons and the various themes such as elements of art, such as plants and landscapes, underwater animals, um, trending topics, um, things that go and so much more. Food is another topic. It's so silly. I love it. Food is a great thing to sushi art. Why not? Right? A hamburger, right? Who doesn't love a good hamburger? Pizza in flying through space, for instance. So if you want to check that out, my friend, make sure that you scan the QR code 
for on the screen. That will take you um, to Artastic Kids membership. You can Google Artastic Kids. That will probably help you find it as well. Or you can hit the link in the description of this video and that will take you right to where you can view information about the Artastic Kids membership and even look at images of some of the art we're gonna create in there. And it only uses four simple art mediums, wax crayons, oil pastels, felt markers, and your watercolor paints. So you don't need to go buy a bunch of things. It's just the most affordable mediums, easiest to use, easiest to clean ones available. And it makes it so much more. And you'll have someone, me, just me, teaching your children how to make art and create various artworks using those mediums. It's so fun and I can't wait to see you there. All right, my friend, your question for this episode, because I want to hear your answers in the comments below the video, is what questions do you have about teaching art at home? I would love to hear your questions. Let me know in the video, just um, comments of this video, and then I will be sure to personally respond to you. Thank you so much for watching. Your next video to watch is how to help your child make art at home. And you can watch that video by clicking the link above or in the description of the video. And I will see you in that episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Help me get to my goals of 10,000, 100,000 subscribers. I would very much appreciate that. It's also gonna help me be seen on the YouTube algorithm if I have likes and subscribes and comments. So I would really appreciate if you could just do that. Take a time, give me a like, talk to me on the comments. I'm not talking to myself all the time and I will see you in the next episode.